welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Let's do a good old fashioned Batman story with Batman going sane or Joker going sane. I've seen a thousand people call this Joker going sane. Mm. It is a story that centralizes around the Joker, but it's still in a Bat title. Right. And it's called Batman. Right. Well, it's a Legends of the Dark Knight. It is, yes. Legends of the Dark Knight. Now, we've talked about this label before, but just to give a quick recap, Legends of the Dark Knight was a Batman imprint in the 90s, started in the 80s, self-contained original stories that could be made into graphic novels for resale in the book market. Every four issues or so, new creative team, new story, usually set in the past. In continuity? Sometimes. Argu arguably. Okay. Depending on when it's being made or how objectionable the material is. <laughs> you know, like Batman Venom, when Batman gets hooked on Venom. Right. I'm sure people were like, there's no way this happened. And then it does happen and it's like, oh, that, that happened? Okay, yikes. Uh, and more. But uh, this one, it's written by J.M.D. Mateus, art by Joe Staten, and... Well, at the end of this story, we, it's not like we get rid of the Joker. No, we're not gonna kill the Joker at the end. This actually spun out of Craven's Last Hunt. What? Yeah. How? <laughs> well, uh, D. Mateus pitched Craven's Last Hunt originally as a Batman story. Oh. And the DC editors were like, no. Uh, Who actually, was the hunter? Interesting. Uh, well, it, what's funny is, in Craven's Last Hunt, we're talking about Spider-Man, but yeah. like still, Craven was not Demetrius' first pick for the hunter at all. In fact, Demetrius created an original character that the editor really enjoyed and responded to. And then one day, Demetrius was reading like a Marvel handbook of all the characters, <laughs> and he came upon Craven the Hunter, who was a character he did not regard in any way, like most of us. He's wearing his leopard print pants and his like Bob Fosse lion vest. With right. two eyes yeah. on the side. And he's yep. like, what a fucking idiot. And then he read that he was Russian, and Demetrius is like a Tolstoy fan, so he's like, oh, <gasps> Russian sorrow. And then just like went ham on Craven. He was like, I don't know anything about this character. I don't even like this character, but he's Russian. And then went nuts and wrote this whole and wrote the definitive and last Craven the Hunter story and huh. the editor was like I like that original character Craven sucks we don't use him anymore and he's like yeah yeah trust me and then you know he this will was, play better couldn't you just make the original character you had Russian nah <laughs> <laughs> I mean I like that because I like reusing your rogues gallery me too especially to like more mature effect you yeah know, like we have a new interpretation of craven yeah and yeah the, well i think he was just so in love with the idea of taking like a goofy silly character and mm -hmm. then grounding him yeah that he just couldn't resist right so in that story it was the villain that was trying to get into the mind of spider-man yeah well the the villain was trying to prove they could be a better spider-man than spider-man yeah yeah and in this case, it was like, I want to kill Spider-Man, but I want him to know I killed him. So I won't kill him, <laughs> but I'll kill him through conventional means, right. like a shotgun that just happened to also not be filled with buckshot that would have killed him. Yeah. He did a pretty good job of besting oh. him at times. He beat Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. So 50% yeah. of his goals were achieved. Yeah. The goal of replacing Listen, him, not successful. In Craven's Last Hunt, Craven the Hunter as Spider-Man rescues Mary Jane. Right. So, you know. Yeah, but that's that one. better than Spider-Man would have done it. No, no. Well, certainly with less finesse. <laughs> Craven had a rope instead of webbing. Anyway. So, in this story, are we, assuming, are we assuming <laughs> that uh, it is Batman who's trying to get into the mind of the Joker, or is it Joker trying to get in the mind of Batman? Neither. S what? Yeah. But you'll see Craven's <laughs> last hunt kind of like echoed in this. This was pitched back in the 80s, and DC was like, no, we got something in the works right now with Batman and the Joker and their big final confrontation with Alan Moore. Back in the day, DC only printed one original graphic novel a year. And they were like, oh, sorry, you missed the cutoff. We already, we already used We already one. used it, yeah. Uh, can I vote for next year? No. no. Now, we like to only make a certain amount of money every year. <laughs> exactly. We don't want to make any more than that. We don't want to appear greedy. That's certainly, that was certainly DC's approach. Or successful. Well, right. yeah. That's yeah. why we're the number three publisher in a two-publisher system. So, <laughs> thankfully, Legends of the Dark Knight came along and he's like, I can do it! Here we go! So, the idea is, what if the Joker goes sane? And it's not really... Like, there's actually what if he, really... like, pretends to go sane, no. I'm guessing? No. No, it, no, it's very... Okay, so if you're <laughs> familiar with Demetrius, he's very cerebral. He likes to talk mm. about, like, how, what, what, are the, what are these characters or villains reflect the human condition? And, right. You know, it's all metaphorical, but also it literally happened, though. <laughs> and uh, so... 
we'll get into it, but you be be sure to point out when you're like, oh, there's the Craven's last hunt thing. Uh, okay. So yeah, when does he drink like poison? None of that. Blood. Okay, they're, they're, don't look for the cosmetic. I, I don't know. There might, I might not get any of it then because I don't know if I remember <laughs> enough of Craven's last hunt. Well, just the concept of like Spider-Man being in the ground for, I think, several weeks. Yeah. And Craven oh kind of like masquerading as someone else. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the story opens where Joker is. Uh, impersonating a parade, like he set up this whole elaborate parade. Dimitez takes some liberties with the Joker. I think he's like, the thing is he likes the Joker because the Joker can be anything and do right. anything. Like he's obsessive, <laughs> so it's like in this version, the jo and hey, because it's technically in the past, like I think Gordon's a captain in this story. That's mm. usually okay. because Batman has been one way for so long, despite like cosmetic additions like Robins or Asriel's. Uh, Gordon, Alfred, Batman, and the suit, you're kind of like, I don't really know what year this is supposed to take place in, but if you check out Gordon's promotion history, then you'll know what time period it takes place <laughs> in. So, oh, Gordon's a cat, not commissioner. Oh, it's in the past. Right. Okay. Oh, Who, so then which Joker is this? Right. He's also not a detective. <laughs> no, no, we're not even gonna do that. <laughs> Although, let us know in the comments down below, what Joker of the three Jokers is this Joker? Yeah, which one do you think? I think it's Gaggy Joker. I've seen, well, other than this, two parades in Gotham. Right, yeah. The one in the movie. Yeah. The one in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Just one. The one in the movie and this. Yeah. yeah. And the so, Joker's behind all of them. Yeah, never go to a parade in Gotham. 100% of the time, it'll be Joker. <laughs> How does Joker arrange a parade? Right? I assume... I guess through various, like, shell organizations. <laughs> well, like, you'll notice that everyone in the parade are, like, circus performers, so my assumption is that he... Because Joker's also, like, a master of disguise. <laughs> And by that, I mean he impersonates other clowns. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, you are that identifiable. You, There's no way I'm not going to know you're the Joker. Well, yeah, unless I'm a clown of some other type. Who's going to follow a clown who's organizing a parade? Administrators matter. organize parades. They hire the clowns. Well, it was a simpler time. It's set in a simpler time. You don't time. listen to the clown. <laughs> no, you don't. The, the you're like, clown... whoa, 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 why are we listening to this fucking clown who's telling everyone where to go? to represent the people we don't listen to or have no credence in. <laughs> He's a literal clown. I'm not going where he tells me to go. <laughs> what? So Joker arranges for this parade. Um, you see Joker on the cover. There's a parade. You're like, okay, Joker's arranged the parade. Right. Uh, plus, Joker's ongoing monologue narrates the story. And you'll notice that like oh. they keep this jagged font for Joker's kind of mind. Mm -hmm. and okay. They play with lettering to show you him going sane. Oh, the lettering gets cleaner. Gets cleaner, yeah. yeah when that he makes gets, sense. When he gets normal. DiMatteis wanted to go, okay, if a character you know, is pushed to the limits, they go insane. Well, what about a character who is insane? If you push them to their limits, maybe they go sane. Like, they go in the opposite direction. Right, okay. Oh, you do a full 360. Exactly. Right. <laughs> well, this is just the concept of going sane. You can go insane. Right. Why not, why not go sane? Why not go sane? And that's why not just what reverse happens it? in the story. Yeah. Well, so. I mean, do you go sane to a different endpoint, or do you just return to being the sane that you were before? Like, are you your old self or are you a new different kind of sane good question was the oh. joker ever sane right that's a great question and because i think dimatteis was competing with alan moore to tell the story of who the joker was he's kind of like well fuck that one right oh or this he, is my joke or there's multiple pasts or identities joker could take were mm. he to affect sanity anyway so in park ridge there's a bunch of Gothamites in there. It's like a it's like a depressed area of Gotham, okay. as opposed to every other area of Gotham. <laughs> but Joker ranges for this impossible parade, and there's also this clown. Obviously, Joker is the clown. Yeah. He's performing like spectacular feats of juggling. Mm. That's how you know it's in the past. Like People are delighted by this. <laughs> like he's juggling more than three balls. Certainly, at least yeah. five. Yeah. And, uh, and then, of course, he reveals from, like, because his face is obscured by shadow and his big, bulky, he's pretending to be a fat clown. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, clumsy, but his clumsiness is like a ballet. It's right. expertly done. And then he, like, drops some of the balls that he was juggling, and those balls are bombs. Uh, and he, like, slaughters at least 40 people. Oh, jeez. Yikes. Uh, he's revealed at one point. Are they being, like, gassed? Nope. They're just kind of, I guess... You know, news travels slow down to Park Ridge and Gotham. That the Joker is this character, it looks exactly like the Joker. Right. But Joker blows up everybody, by the way. His, his, his accomplices in the circus. Oh. Because I don't think they knew he was the Joker. <laughs> right. For some reason. 
<laughs> Look, if you are a uh, trapeze artist, if you are a stilt uh, walker, organ grinder with a monkey, yes. Uh, if you get work, you're taking it. That's right. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a parade today. The last time I had a parade was five years ago. <laughs> was it 1905? <laughs> Does he actually say that he arranged this parade? No, it's just the, well because I feel like maybe he just infiltrated. Do you think it? he infiltrated? I, I think he I think he arranged the entire. Thing. Why would Gotham mm. ever have a parade? What do they have to celebrate? <laughs> well, I think they need no, the parade you to need the parade. Exactly. from the horrors of everyday Parades life. Parades are things you do to paper over the the horribleness the of, of life. Of true yeah. life, yeah. Interesting. It's snowing. You don't have a parade I in think, the snow. I well, think that's he what's infiltrated even more surprising. it. I think he infiltrated because I can't conceive of how he could have arranged it. That's so fair. <laughs> well, I, I think that the, the fact that they're all circus performers is deliberate. Maybe it is homaging a little bit of Killing Joke because mm. you know Joker has camaraderie with circus right. performers. Right, right. But then he kills them. So yeah, then clearly they anyway. either didn't know the plan or he just didn't want to pay them. Right, or maybe yeah. he did. Maybe he threatened them and they're under coercion, or he offered to pay them and mm. then. Killed them anyway. Maybe they're um, they're uh, they're all in. Right. They're like cultists, and they're like, oh, f my life for the cause. Yes, for the Joker. My, my great final performance. Yes. yes, yes. Any of those is canon. <laughs> we cut to the crime scene after the fact. A couple of younger folk are looting the area, and then Batman shows up, and he's like, "Don't do this." But he's actually really like unhinged and angry. Huh? <laughs> like. He just, he, he tries to do the intimidation tactic because it's all like younger teenagers. Right. So he just shows up and he's like, you're not going to loot here. And then one of them's like, you're a, you're a douche in a Halloween costume. Like, I'm not afraid of you. So he tries you to attack Batman and Batman just backhands him and calls him stupid and then throws him into the wall. Jesus. And they're like, anybody else? And they're like, okay, Batman, right, sorry, well, bye. And he's like, yeah, and I'll never do that again. <laughs> and then Batman investigates the crime scene and he's just uh, coming up coming up short. So he goes he back can't to the figure cave. it out. No, well, it's just like, well, why? What, what uh, happened? Ah, right. Well, you know the Joker did it, right? Like, well, yeah, everyone he knows is the aware. Joker. Yeah. Oh, no, the front page of the paper says, the Joker's, Joker's back. back. He blew yeah. up this area of Park Ridge. Yeah, So okay. Batman goes back to the cave, and he's pulled up his Joker file, which, as near as I can tell, is just photos of the Joker. <laughs> and he's, there. And his monologue is also kind of, like, unhinged. Joker and Batman kind of mirror each other, and they're like, mm. oh, man! So, as I mentioned earlier, you know, different versions of the Joker for different writers in different eras. This Joker is obsessed with like 1930s and 40s comedians and comedy acts and routines. He's a big fan of like Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin, which is why he's affecting Charlie Chaplin here. Yeah. My younger people will be like, why is Joker dressed like Hitler on the cover? It's like, that's Charlie <laughs> Chaplin. That was, a, that was a mustache at the time. That's why J. Jonah Jameson also has that mustache. Right. Anyway, he's, the, he's the tramp. He's the tramp, exactly. That's a fundamental aspect of his character that will carry through the entire book, so like, you Great. better get used to it. Yeah. You're like, he'd never do that. It's like, well, he's going to. Well, he did. So Batman is just like, ah, this guy, just, ah, he just punches the screen. Yikes. <laughs> like, hurts his hand. He just, he just can't, right. just can't like, Why it. didn't I kill him? I could have saved all his lives. No, he's not like I just like killed that. him last he, time he killed no, someone. No, he's more like, he's just, he's just so committed to the mission. He's, yeah. just, he's just like, oh, this guy... Uh, he's he's madness, guy. and I'm the only you know buoy of sanity in an ocean of crazy and blah blah blah. So what? What's, exactly. <laughs> like sh whatever, Batman. <laughs> so meanwhile, there's a uh, young lady. She's outside of the like city hall. She calls a taxi. The taxi's the Joker. He pulls her in. Uh, he talks to her for more than two seconds. He doesn't run away. So obviously, the Joker must be new. And uh, mm -hmm. but everyone knows him anyway. And this is a councilwoman, by the way. She's not a long-standing character of the series, but you know we're establishing her here. And so Joker, you know, he he pulls her into the cab. You know, she says she says where she wants to go, and he's like, "Oh, we're not going there." And she's like, "What?" And that's what tips her off. Yeah. Not the fact that she's talking to the Joker, but Joker pulls her in, and then Joker takes her to her lair, which is just an old depressed cinema. Is it the cinema where the Waynes were killed? Oh. Nobody cares. Demetrius wants to do a thing about old cinema and the Joker, but doesn't want to tie it in directly with Batman's origin. And okay. I, I, I kind of respect it. Right. He's like, this is an unrelated old cinema yeah. reference. There were yeah. other theaters in Gotham, okay? Not just the one. And you know yeah. what? Like that, I, I admire his restraint because there's another book with three Jokers where they do the, literally that thing. <laughs> so. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I did like that. Right. But that you was... can only get away with it like yeah, one or two times. Yeah, you can't times. do that every fucking time. But you can do it twice in the same year, though. <laughs> and he's playing like old Chaplin films. Mm. Oh, he just wants a date. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Joker's sexuality and restraint is pretty weird in this book, and I'm not gonna get into it too much, but mm. like, 
he clearly is hungry for the company of a woman. Oh, okay. not that he, we're, and we're not going to go like killing joke where it's like, did he rape Barbara Gort? Like, uh, number one, I don't want to have that conversation. Number mm. two, it's not even close to that dark. Right. But it does get pretty brutal mm. because we've already blown up a crowd of people. So. I, right. But yeah, but those are that's collateral damage to the main story. <laughs> right. Who cares about them? That's they were lambs in the slaughter of the storm. <laughs> Crusty jugglers. <laughs> Joker and Councilwoman Kenner are in the theater and he's busting a gut and she's just hoping she doesn't die. Right. Yeah. It's like, what's wrong? Don't you think it's funny? Literally that. And he yeah. like starts name dropping all these different ancient comedians uh -huh. and uh, sees the fear in her eyes. We actually cut to his eyes and we see like the insanity of his eyes. Mm -hmm. I point this out because Batman brings it up later. Yeah. But uh, I can see it. It's there. Yeah. So yeah. then he just beats on her. He just, he just, oh. he just beats her until his fists are bloody. Oh. And uh, it just like... Because she won't agree with him about comedy. Right. She won't laugh. Ah. That's really what it is. Yikes. Uh, so Batman is just tearing through the city. He has nothing to go on. And suddenly the bat signal comes on and it's the Joker's profile instead of the bat signal. Oh. So he goes to the location of the bat signal. Presumably the Joker is in his previous circus performing clown suit. And so Batman talks to him like, oh, you maniac, I'm gonna, where's Council and Kenner? Why'd you leave her out of this? The, the dude's like, what are you talking about? Like, it's clearly a double. Yeah, right. The Joker put up to this. Yeah. With some really good prosthetics. Yeah, well, no, it's just it's just really convenient shadows. <laughs> yeah, it's dark, but yeah. I can't really see what's going on. So uh, Batman just beats the living hell out of him, just yelling at him, I'm not gonna allow you to hurt this city! Oh, no, not uh, for again! Like, okay, Batman, holy crap. Jeez. And then he's like, oh. oh. thank God I got that on my system and I didn't kill the real Joker. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 it's just Frank McGuire. Good old stooly Frank McGuire. You son of a bitch. Anyway, you're going to jail. Like. <laughs> for wearing makeup. Well, for working for the Joker. Like, you know, and also changing I guess the, fuck it with the, the sign. silhouette on the bat yeah, light. I'm sure they didn't let him in, so it was B&E. Anyway, yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> Frank's story is over. He tells Batman where to meet the Joker. Ah. So Batman's like, nah, and he smashes the bat signal. Well, the Joker signal. They go to, like, an old cabin in, you know, whatever the woods of the not New York Gotham is in. Like the cat skills, but not. Yes. The dog skills <laughs> of Gotham. Or the Poconos. Yes. Or, yeah. The Adirondacks. The Noconos. Yeah. What's the other one? Uh, well, on Long Island, there's a place. What, the hoity-toity area? Yeah. Oh, Richmond. the Hamptons. Hamptons. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this Hamptons. is more this is more wooded. More rustic. Okay. Yeah, it's more rustic. I think it's more like the Adirondacks or the yeah. Poconos. Okay. In any event, none of those are real <laughs> in the DC universe. Right, or right. the are... DC version of those. Like, I think there is in New York, so like that does exist, but also that needs to be a little bit of room. Maybe it's yeah. the Pine Barrens, because technically Gotham is in New Jersey. Mm. So Batman sure. takes the Batcopter to go... To go Check it out. It's far enough away. He needs the cut. Batman needs air conveyance yeah, to do Yeah, a so. gyrocopter, by the way. That's right. With a little propeller on the front. Yeah, well, because Dimitri is a slave to the old traditions of Batman and, and classics. He likes, he's referencing a lot of Chaplin. Obviously, he's a fan himself. He would, no one would make all these references. Just comb over ancient books of comedians <laughs> to make the references for Joker. Right, he, he knows likes those them. things. Yeah. So the Joker likes them. So Joker likes them. And I guess he's probably a fan of Batman 66 which is where this gyrocopter would probably come into play. Mm. So Batman flies in and he lands and Joker is in the doorway of this cabin and he's got Councilman Kenner like under his arm with a gun mm. in her head and he's like, oh, Batman, like, yeah, you came. This is great. Yeah, I'm going to make... I'm... This is not... And I can imagine why DC was like, okay, we got a script for this and we got a script for Killing Joke. Uh, we're going to go with Killing Joke. Mm -hmm. Not that Killing Joke is better, but more that like... Killing I mean, Joke... it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hang in there. But uh, but Killing Joke is much more about Batman and the Joker. Like it's a, Their conversations are about them. Right. These are conversations where it's we're just displaying both men's kind of like lack of tether to, to sanity. And Joker being like, I'm a huge comedian fan. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> it's just that, you know? Right. If you could only understand this, you would get me. Right, there's not as yeah. much like subtext of their relationship. No, right. or maybe there's more subtext, but it's deeper. Like mm. it takes more work to get to it, so well, it's a little less satisfying. And it's not necessarily about their relationship, but <laughs> no. their own individual personalities. Yeah, yeah, you're seeing them definitely butt heads in that, reg in that respect. So Joker's like, ah, whatever. Like, you, you represent law and order, law and order's bullshit, watch, and then he shoots Kenner in the head, Batman's just like, Ooh! like Batman's just like, he doesn't know what to do. He's beside himself. He's, I right. guess he's a little bit of a, more of a greenhorn 
So he's like, duh. And then Joker goes, ah, it was a blow up doll. It's the best I could do for a Friday night, ha ha ha. But uh, yeah, no, I didn't, huh. I didn't, I didn't kill uh, Council of Encounter. Oh, I fight. did beat her savagely. I did, yeah. yeah, no. So let's fight. Batman's like, ah! ah. So Batman and Joker fight. Uh, they get into the cabin. Joker says that he's running late and he's gotta go. He references a sponsor for today's radio broadcast, you know, like like he's doing, like the whole thing. Yeah. Like it's a bit? Well, like it's like it's a comedy bit from the 40s on okay. the radio. On the radio, like yeah. The ra like the, the parade, the kidnapping, the, the, the theater thing, which nobody knows about except for Kenner. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that is all part of his grand joke slash routine that he's put on. But uh, now I've got to take a break for our sponsor from like Acme, and Batman's <laughs> like Acme. That's the play. That's that's the Looney Tunes Corporation that makes explosives. Yeah, we're allowed to reference that. Yeah, and as Batman tries to escape the cabin, the cabin explodes. Mm. Now that is a blow-up doll. Worthy of the Joker. <laughs> so Joker returns to the scene after the commotion has finished, and he finds Batman's broken, mangled body among the wreckage. Right. And he says, ah, uh, it worked. No, no. And so he's like, come on, wake up. And he kicks him in the face and he's not responding. Oh, wow. And he says, wait a minute. No, come on, get back up. And so he, he, he hits him a couple times and he's like, come on, get up. I got like, I got weeks worth of material for you. And he won't get up and he goes, I did it. Holy crap, I did it, I killed Batman! And then he takes his body and he throws it down a little hill and it winds up in a river. And he says, well, some some of us have got it and some of us don't, I got it. Why does he do that? So that Batman can live. Yeah, so Batman wouldn't die. But uh, he's getting rid of the body. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> I don't know. That's what I don't, like. That's what a, like, oh, no. a horrible person. I can't would do. be caught with this body. I'll dispose yeah. of it. Okay, I'm the Joker. I, I'll throw this out there. Joker does suffer from main for, from manic episodes. Hmm. There's a moment later in the book where he will like manically hop around, and it, it's just he loses control does of himself. Does he manically physically. dance in front of a mirror? He does not do that. Nor does he <laughs> dance down very precarious stairs. Oh, nor right. does he dance in the pale moonlight. What is? Yeah, what's up with cinematic Joker dancing? Anyway, so he throws him in the river and he goes, well, it's, it's been a good run, but I guess we all gotta go sometime. And he seems like kind of crestfallen. Hmm. He goes back to the theater, because it's an abandoned theater. No one's going there. Nobody knew it was his hideout, except for Council and Kenner. Right. And uh, so he's still throwing on like old cereals and he's got his little like, I don't know, like old policeman's Bobby uniform <laughs> and he's doing a whole little bit. Uh -huh. And he's just, he's just doing his bit but for nobody, for no audience. Yeah. And Oh, so Kenner's not there anymore? No, no, no. He he like got rid of her. Okay. Not that she's dead, but he just he's, She's not She's not there. Yeah, she was in the building else. and she's she wasn't in the in, squirreled away somewhere. She squirreled away or whatever. She got away. Oh, she oh. Yeah, and and it's not really clear as to what happened. I think it's that like as Joker starts to go through this like existential crisis, he just forgets about her and she gets away. Okay. Because she factors into the story later. But yeah, I see. Joker does, like, you know, he does his thing. Like, he's doing his usual thing. Usually when you see Joker in a Batman story, you know, Joker's alone. And he's like, ah, he's monologuing or dancing or doing whatever. Right. But now he knows there's no Batman coming for him. So the film ends, and then he just, like, kind of stops, and he climbs off the stage. <laughs> and then he just, like... Blank, unblinkingly stares off in the middle distance and wanders away from the theater and blows it up. Oh. So the theater explodes and he's like, well, this was a nice night. Uh, I guess I should get a hotel. Oh, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> right, like, I guess I got a hotel, get a good night's sleep, and I gotta do something about this face. And he just leaves. What? His face? Yeah, well, his, his skin condition, I should say. Oh, okay. Meanwhile, a couple of children, uh, back in the like not Adirondacks, uh, <laughs> run to the local town physician, Dr. Eagles, and uh, they <laughs> tell her that a man has washed up on the riverbank right. and he's not quite dead. What? How do they know that? Well, he's breathing. What are they, Miracle Max? He's breathing. <laughs> There's breath, it's he's cold. He's only mostly dead. <laughs> they probably puffed air into him and squeezed his chest and he said something like, Do Justice. <laughs> Uh, I like Justice better. <laughs> so Batman's out of commission, and the Joker is now kind of like left to his own devices. Right. Dr. Eagles, Dr. Eagles, you gotta help him. And can we keep him afterwards? Yeah. It's I've Got a Batman in My Basement, one of everyone's favorite episodes of Batman the Animated Series. <laughs> Councilwoman Kenner returns, and she's like, 
Yeah, I was attacked by a crazy clown. What is Captain Gordon doing here? Like mm -hmm. she is, she is done with like Batman's and like lame duck commissioners mm -hmm. and just like the shitty town. But she's still a councilwoman for Gotham, so she's like, we gotta do something about this shitty city. <laughs> Cause like I was oh. brutalized by the joke. Oh, we gotta do it something. To me, so oh, now I oh, care. I, I didn't care now. before. Oh, why didn't we think of that? Do something about crime. Well, okay. I, well, now that well, you think, say because it, because it happened to me. Now I know that like all the institutions that are here to protect us don't work. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny. I was telling my constituents they were working all the time when they elected me. That's true. Yeah. Well, now I'm now I'm getting reelected. There's no way you could have known that it didn't work until it personally happened to you. Exactly. Yeah, it's not like there are police reports or anything. So Alfred's just kind of puttering around the cave, waiting for Batman to come home. Oh. And Alfred's sad. And he's sad. He pulls up like the last thing that Batman looked up on the computer, his Joker. So he's like, he, he reasons with no dialogue or internal narrative that maybe Joker's responsible. Right. Uh, we see a nightmarish vision of bats and rivers and plastic surgeons and Jokers. And uh, this man awakens in a like divey kind of like apartment complex. So he got himself plastic surgeried. Yes. And he's... Unbleached all his skin and fixed his hair. Yep. Yep. And he, when he Still wakes up... Still didn't anything about that chin, though. No. Nah. Nah. Well, it's it's tough. You know, it's bone. So <laughs> he, uh, he he chalks up the visions of the Joker and stuff to a bad dream. He has lost the Joker persona. He is completely wow. cracked or restructured into this new Some other person. guy. Does he have a name that he goes he, by? He does. Uh, okay. So... <laughs> Okay. He's, he's Do get, what? Does he have a fucking gonna, job? He's like, gonna he's gonna try to like get charge of his life because it's like it's been a long time since like my parents passed and left me a little bit of money. That must be how I had this money. And you know, he, he fabricates an entire backstory for himself. Interesting. And uh, and that's cool. Yeah, and, and I want to believe it's not real. Oh right, like that. He's just like he's just playing a part. Yeah. So he walks out the door and he bumps into this young woman who he is also musing about hopefully meeting someday. Like he's like, maybe I could settle down with a nice girl. Bump, I bumped into a nice girl. Ah. Clandestinely. Uh, this is Rebecca. And Rebecca is like an older, you know, she's like in her late 30s. She's never married. She's alone. She lives in this like kind of divey apartment. And she's very simple, you know, just like a regular work-a-day lady. And she bumps into this guy. And he, uh, he offers to carry her groceries because it's the least he could do because he knocked them out of her hands. And she looks in his eyes and she sees softness and kindness and she, she lets him in and the two of them talk and they, they, they and her narration takes over and she's got mm. a little like fun... She's dry, cursive because yeah. she's a girl. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and yep. for some reason their handwriting is impeccable. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know why but that's the case across the board. She tells the story like she's writing in her diary and this is the past and she talks about how she met him. Okay. Like the love of her life. And uh, so she says, I, I don't think I've ever seen you in the building before. He goes, oh, I just moved in a couple of weeks ago. So we know Batman has been on a riverbank or at least in that town for a couple of weeks now. Okay. Uh, so, she, Or it's a lie. Right. It's not. Okay. So he introduces himself to her as Joseph Kerr. Joe Kerr. God damn it. <laughs> That's super lame. I okay. know. Don't worry. They reference it. Ah, okay. Like oh, so it's okay. So it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not dumb at all. <laughs> I don't know. There's this like ongoing kind of like one-sided conversation on TV. The news just keeps giving Kenner like more time to talk about the ineffective, Im like, you know, impotent police department and Captain Gordon and Joker and Whoa, whoa, whoa. we're putting all the blame on Captain Gordon. What about the commissioner? Right, yeah, well, he was indicted, like, in year one, so I don't even know who the commissioner is right, the, right <laughs> there. Maybe there is no commissioner. Right, maybe there isn't, and they're just kind of, like, figuring it out. They keep, like, interviewing <laughs> candidates, and then they're like, oh, wait, this is Gotham? Fuck off, and they leave. I feel like at whatever level he's at, Gordon is always responsible for all <laughs> crime in Gotham. You know what, that's, you know why that is? Because he's responsible and because he, like, takes charge. Right, he like, steps up. He steps yeah, up. Yeah. Anyone who's like, hey, I'll take care of that, get ready to take the blame yep. for that as that well. That is 100% true. But if you are successful, be prepared to share that success <laughs> with everybody else around you as well. <laughs> anyway, a courtship resumes between Joe and Rebecca, and they have this whole, like, weeks go by, and they fall in love with each other, and a couple of moments, like, you know, he's playing with cards, and he comes upon the Joker, and he just gets triggered. He doesn't turn into the Joker. He right. just goes catatonic. 
Yeah, right. it kind of phases out. Yeah, and she's like, hey, hey, you're having one of your episodes. He's like, hey, where'd you oh, go? Oh. Yeah, where'd you go? Oh. And he's just like, uh, uh, nothing. It's like, oh, shit. Oh, oh I see boy. the clowns. Yeah. Mommy, can you see the clowns? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not nearly as cliched as you'd think. Does he, um... Is there narration from him that explains, like, why? Or is it really just like, well, once Batman's gone, there's no reason for him to be crazy anymore. Yeah. Okay. Well, once Batman's gone, Joker, like, goes crazy. But he's already crazy, so which yeah, way so does he, he go? Yeah, so he goes sane. He goes right. sane. He's and he's change. become a new person. And this new person has his own, like, inner monologue. Like, Joe is thinking about, like, his hopes and dreams and like the, the nightmares he experiences and the woman he loves and like mm. there's no like ah you will never be anything without me like there's no goleming in this book which right. I really appreciate <laughs> he's just freaking out yeah he just he just constantly freaks out like he got he gets mail it says Joseph Curry like crosses out all the letters before it says Joker and then you see like a 12 panel sequence of him just like not becoming the Joker yeah like a almost smile almost smiling. comes upon him and then he just starts crying instead Hmm. So he's like aware. He doesn't to know some he's the degree Joker. It's like about the Joker, he's maybe aware subconsciously. That, maybe subconsciously. You might want to have to go. You'll have to go into it. But his his own internal monologue doesn't suggest that there's like a Joker somewhere that he's got to keep down a monster within. Right. He's not consciously containing the Joker. No. Right. No. All he. But he does is, is seeing it in his dreams. He suffers from dreams of right. drowning and being attacked by a monster right. that looks exactly like the Joker. Oh, by drowning. Yeah. Well, because he was by the river. I was assuming it was the like Axis Chemicals. It, well, that could be. Ooh. They don't show Axis Chemicals, though. So I'm like, wow, hey, either that's like subtlety, and it's he's capable of that, <laughs> or he's just like, no, I just want to keep it focused. Laser right. focused. Doesn't doesn't matter how he became the Joker. Right. We're talking I don't about... care about that. It's right. what, what, he was not the Joker right now. Right. So hmm. uh, okay. Elias Bruckner is reported to have been this like noteworthy plastic surgeon who was also, he used to work for the Underworld. And now he's dead and they found him. He worked for the Underworld. Yeah. Like it's a organization, Underworld well, like, LLC, they, he and he was like, employed he was, by he them. Was, he, maybe he used to be like a notable plastic surgeon. He's dead. He was created for the book. So like who cares? His whole backstory <laughs> is, is, is a blank canvas. Let's say right. that he used to be a, like, a noteworthy plastic surgeon and like maybe he took a job that he shouldn't have or he slipped up and killed someone under the knife huh. and he couldn't practice again. So he, he lost went his underground. license. He went underground right. and he did work hiding like less yeah, mob people, people, mob people. And so, like, he's, just, he's the doctor, he's the crime doctor. Right. I'd love it if, like, cool. he still had to take insurance. Maybe it's, like, a special health insurance that... <laughs> oh, yeah, crime yeah, insurance. People. Yeah, crime insurance by crime, well, by criminals, has, for criminals. Yeah, the underworld probably has their own insurance. Uh, yeah. If you're saying health insurance by criminals, that's just the regular health insurance. Well, that's... Oh! Ha-ha! Gotcha! You didn't expect that in this episode. <laughs> White hot social justice <laughs> for a comic pop. I like how sad it is. We only show Alfred just like puttering around the mansion and just waiting for Batman to come home. Yeah, jeez. He's like, no, he's got to come back. This he's like a, a sad dog. This is a lame, uh, ineffectual Alfred. Alfred. Alfred no, just... he's he doesn't know what to do. Well, he's he's the servant. He's a butler. He's a butler this is just another... Alfred is a butler. He's a servant. He's not a friggin' marine well, or a special things, ops guy. He's, like, he's, he's not a he's not like a minor Batman. Right. He's just a guy. I mean, he for a while he wasn't. Like, they didn't really go as far. I mean, they talked about his, his, his history, mm -hmm. but they never made him, like, a badass later. <laughs> right. He was just, he was an English gentleman who was older, and, so, and that's why he, Batman was like, I have a no-guns thing except for Alfred. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at him. He's so old. Yeah, he's got to defend himself somehow. <laughs> yeah, and you can't be spreading around the story like, Bruce Wayne is missing. Right. You have to find no, him. No, that's the thing. He's like, he's... Yeah, he's got to endure it alone. But it has been weeks, mm. so you might want to come up with an idea. So <laughs> uh, Maybe call... I don't know. Does he have anyone at this point? Is there a, a, no, I, a, a Robin, a Batgirl? I don't know if like, there or... is even a Robin at this point. Like, this okay, is so, it's very early. This could be before yeah. year two. Yeah, okay. I like that. Kenner, you know, she escaped from Joker's prison in the theater. The theater explodes. People were like, oh, well, that must be where he was. And he died. She's like, just a fucking way. What? You know. There's but, no body. Yeah. But no, let's just assume. Oh, it was vaporized. Vaporized. Completely vaporized. Blown up the scene. Yeah. Can a body do that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But then we see that Joe is seeing this on TV. This, like, constant, vitriolic, outraged victim of the Joker. Right. Yelling about the Joker let on it TV. Go. And he's like, ah! And he turns it off. He's like, who, told, who left this TV on in the first place? And what he does... You know is, you can't leave the TV on! Basically that. Yeah. And instead what they do is they don't, like, watch TV. Like, they rent old tapes from, like, the 30s and 40s mm -hmm. of, like, old movies and comedy. Okay. And they listen to like old radio broadcasts on cassette. 
together. Jeez, yeah. no wonder she was single. Ugh. But I mean, you know, it's these two, right. and it's like it's cute. You know, it's, it's, this is what they, this is how they bond. Yeah. So uh, you know, he, she has a TV because she's not a total square, <laughs> and uh, but he's mad at it because he's you know because it's triggering him and he doesn't know it. Right. And uh, she's like, hey, like I think you might be getting upset. Like you should lie down on the couch. And when he looks at Rebecca, he sees Councilwoman Kenner, and he gets all jokery oh. and he remembers beating on her, and then he t- tries to attack her. Oh and my before god! He, before he he rears back to punch her, and then before he does, he's like, "Oh my god, Rebecca, I'm so sorry to look at me," and he runs away. And she, in her like future monologue, is like, "I should have left, but I didn't." Mm. And Joker, well, Joker <laughs> hides behind the front door and then just like has a laughing fit and then gets back to himself. Okay, all right. Uh. Something about this councilwoman Kenner. There's nothing really there, but like for some reason, Joker really fixated on that councilwoman originally. Was it? Was, did he have a plan involving her, or did she coincidentally get I, into I, his cab? I think he picked her. Like I think he targeted her. Why? I think because she's a councilwoman. Right. That kind of makes sense. So, just, she like, could have been any councilwoman, but there there's only so many of them, well, and, and he picked a, her. She's pretty. Uh, and like, she's okay. a woman. She's young. She's like a well, but not too young. You know, she's like right. around his age bracket. Right. Okay. There's a subtext of the Joker has a problem with women. Yeah. Here. I give them props for at least not making, like, Joe Kerr date Councilwoman Kenner. Totally. Like, oh, my God. oh, my God. And then they're just having conversations back and forth. Yeah. yeah. That would have been a little lazy, but it would have been two extra shorter. <laughs> so Gordon lights the signal. Nothing happens. His cigarette goes out. Morning comes. This is what, this is what Councilwoman Kenner is like, and and, and friggin' well, our the electric our, bill is going up uh, the, uh, through the roof. Well, our captain's idea of fighting crime is to shine a light in the sky <laughs> and hope a, a magical bat creature will come and save us. Right? Yeah. These are your ideas, Captain. Yeah. No wonder I was brutalized. Exactly. Exactly. You can write this whole story. <laughs> so Rebecca wakes up and she is met by a room filled with flowers, and Joe is like. I'm sorry, I flipped the handle, and uh, will you marry me? Oh. And he gives her a ring. Oh, that fixes Yeah, it's only been, what, two months? Sure. It's been six months. Oh, shit. What? <laughs> Batman's recovering for six, six months? months? Yes. And where? Oh, my. Where indeed? That's insane. Okay. That is insane. I agree. That is insane. That. that. Not the Joker. That. <laughs> so Alfred just, like, he wakes up. He goes down to the cave, I guess, to like putter around. Like he does. Like he's been every... doing it for six months. Yep. And uh, and then he goes to like off the farthest regions of the cave, and there, standing in the shadows, is Batman. And oh. he just smiles, and Batman says, "I'm back." <laughs> what? What? I read that as "I'm back." <laughs> well, that's not exactly how Batman said. <laughs> I read it as a silhouette, and Alfred's just going crazy now, hearing Batman everywhere. Yeah, everyone goes crazy in this book. Gordon, Alfred. Except Joker, Joker, Batman, Ghosting. Dark Knight, everyone goes crazy. Exactly. So uh, we, are we going to get the backstory now? Oh yeah. Let's well, go back. Well, not yet. No. Oh. Joker, Joe Kerr takes Rebecca on a stroll through Gotham, and he takes her through the area like that he blew up. And Why? while they're walking, Batman is clandestinely looking for the Joker. Like, Batman's returning to the scene of the crime. Right, he's like, Joker. he's gonna return to the scene of the exactly. crime. It's been six months, but it, today yeah. he's gonna return. Yes. Evidence is gone, man. Well, like, he, he had evidence lying there in pools of blood. He didn't know what the fuck to do with it. So yeah, but he's just trying to put it all together. But you yeah. see, like, he lands and he stumbles. Like, he's not quite himself yet. Right, he's, not 100%. he's injured or whatever. And he's just like, ah, where the fuck ah, Joker? Gonna gonna... You, you killed me, you son of a bitch. And like, we have this sequence that's very similar. Okay, but he didn't kill you, though. No, but like you did. Like I, I could have I been could killed. I could have been killed. I was, I was, my body was broken. I was left in the river. Right. And you like, did leave me for dead. Yes. Right. You well, shot me with a shotgun. It's and the there, same. Yeah. It's almost exactly the same as Kramer's Last Hunt, where Spider-Man was buried alive. He's like, you killed me. You left me in the ground. Like, right. It's the same thing. You left me in the river. I was drowned. Right. I was as good as dead. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, it's the publisher's flagship hero, defeated by a classic villain left for dead under something right. that would have otherwise killed them for an inordinate amount of time. Right. <laughs> yeah, very inordinate. That's that's Craven's last time. Yeah. So Okay. And then we get then we go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, <laughs> we see Batman like washes up on the shore. So ba- so Bruce Wayne wakes up in Dr. Eagle's room. <laughs> like her house. I thought you said Dr. Evil. Dr. Evil. Like... Hello Batman. <laughs> After the frying pan into the fire, what did you say? <laughs> By the way, this is not going to be in the episode, but like, 
check out this dope ass <laughs> raptor statue you can get. <laughs> that is fucking cool. <laughs> Isn't this cool? Does it have a price on here? Oh man, I don't know. Good question. Um, or do you have to oh, ask them? Uh, four installments of forty-nine dollars a piece. Oh, so two hundred bucks. This Back then. Bad. Not, oh yeah, those are nineteen ninety-four dollars. Yeah, so that'd $2, be like two thousand dollars. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be that the much, The statue cost three million dollars. <laughs> so Bruce Wayne awakens in Dr. Eagles' house, and no, before you get started, it's not gonna be Misery, where she's like, I love Bruce Wayne, he's my favorite person, and I, I do have a broken ankle, <laughs> Like, it, she just nurses him back to health. I wasn't going there, but okay, good yeah, to know. So, okay. But she says what he had, and he had, when we found you on the river, you had a, you had a, your left thigh bone was shattered, one of your ribs was broken so badly it was coming through the skin, and you were so deep in shock, I thought you were dead. You were so deep in shock, you dressed up as Batman for some reason. <laughs> she knows he's Batman. She doesn't know he's Bruce Wayne necessarily, because she like she's just a simple country doctor who lives far, far away right. from the big city. <laughs> oh yeah, so he's far away from the big city. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. She calls him Lazarus because he came from the dead. And again, if you were lazy or writer, Lazarus Pitts or Talia was in disguise or some right. goddamn thing. She calls him Lazarus because Lazarus came back from the dead. Right. That's the that's it's it. a literary reference Don't and that's the end of it. Don't, or I can call it. you Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, but like After six months you rose. He didn't heal anybody or bring any great tidings to these people. He's just a guy they found anyway. Why didn't she take him to a hospital? Because there's no hospital like Ethan, she is the hospital. Well she is she's the local town doctor. He and was almost dead. Well, she knows he was Batman. Oh, that's right. She saw the bad suits. So she's like, you probably don't want your identity to be known. Yeah. I'll risk she, your life. Oh, she, doesn't even, she doesn't even tell him she knows he's Batman. She says like, oh, you must have told her your car and fall into the river, right? Like she gives him his backstory. Right. That's, yeah, she feeds it to him. That is deeply irresponsible. Any number of things could happen to him while he's trying to recover she's that could cause doctor. him she, to die. And then she would be town. responsible for his death. I agree. For not giving him proper he treatment. He knows who he is, her. right? This isn't like a weird amnesia thing where he forgets? No. Good. No, he doesn't forget. He, he knows who he is. She pretends not to know who he is. Got it. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Just saying, Hippocratic Oath, oh, I agree. she should be doing she all have... measures to well, possible to save him. Snow. Maybe the snow was too thick and it couldn't get out. She couldn't get hit. That's how remote it was. It was very remote. It was literally impossible it's to get a, to a it, hospital. It is a town that is like untouched by the grim and misery of Gotham. I'm, I'm just saying, saying, you find Batman washed up uh, in your cabin. Take him to Gotham You call... Session. 911, yeah. and you tell them this man is almost dead. Yeah. He needs immediate advanced well, medical care. Yeah, but they're going to unmask him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I t again, she doesn't really even give away that she knows who he is. So we cut between like his recovery with Dr. Eagles and the present. Gordon's going over paperwork in the dark, and then Batman is there in the background. Mm. This is Jim, and he goes, Oh, yes, I knew it. And yeah. He's like, I knew you weren't dead. And he comes towards him and goes, don't, don't go anywhere near. No hugs. Yeah. Get away from me. <laughs> And he's like, what's the matter? Why? He's like, just, just no questions. Because you he's, left me die for six months. <laughs> yeah, he, did you go to the cabin? There was a gyrocopter at the cabin with my symbols all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Batman's inner monologue is like, I, Jim Gordon is the closest thing to a friend I have. Mm. And it like took everything I had not to like hug him and tell him I'm okay and like to lean on him as a friend. But right. like, he can't see that I'm limping. Right. He can't know that I'm a person. Right, he can't know I'm just a man. Yeah, because like he'll lose his faith in me and like in he needs to think of me as like an instrument. Right. And not as like a dude that can die. Right. That not, makes sense. And I'm like, okay, yeah. that's cool. As long as we acknowledge it. It's not like fuck you. And right. I'm just an asshole. Which is just Batman for the last twenty years. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right, right. So we meet this other incredible character named Dorothy. And, and Dorothy Bruckner is like the nurse slash wife of the, the, the crime plastic surgeon. She's not like Dr. Bruckner in disguise, no. right? No, she's not. No. Yeah, because Batman like fights her. Granted, she could just be a very strong she could just be a built huge, woman. Crazy woman. I mean, we've seen that before, but like. But I'd love it if Dr. Brooke was like, "Well, this is how I hide I, plastic surgery on myself." But yeah, Joker, like, Joker made Bruckner operate on him, and I assume that he then murdered him in like a manic, you know, amnesia episode. But maybe Bruckner was hurt so badly. I mean, listen, like, Joker is not a very good judge of what's a dead body and what <laughs> isn't a dead body. So maybe Bruckner like used it as a crime of opportunity, and then went under the knife himself and turned himself into his wife or his widow. <laughs> And then inherit his own money, then start his own practice again. Hey, actually, I didn't even—I wasn't a—I wasn't a criminal. My husband was the criminal. Right. I just happened Ooh. to be a very good plastic surgeon myself. Well, I—I I went through school and I put myself. Yeah, there you go. That's. Yeah. Hey, you know what? We don't use Bruckner, so like, yeah, that's what happened. Sure. <laughs> so Batman just wants to confirm 
that Joker used Bruckner to integrate right. into society. And they have a fun fight scene. And right before Batman like punches her in the face, he just reaches out with his hand and goes, thank you, Dorothy, and like pats her condescendingly on the cheek. What? And then leaves. And he just says, like, I know from her eyes that it was the Joker. And like she attacked me out of fear because like the Joker was involved. Okay. That's funny. But yes, it's definitely Bruckner in disguise. Well, that's that's canon for so, us. So that whole conflict was just so he could confirm his hunch that the Joker looks like a normal person. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's right. So Seems now like where did he go? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> no, but it was uh, well. Listen, we've, I'm going to put Joker on like at least three out of the four covers. <laughs> I need to vary it up a little bit. Right. Who's this crazy huge woman that Batman's fighting? <laughs> All right. Eh, so nobody. what's he going to do with this information? Uh, he'll he'll look into it. You know, you'll see. Okay. You'll, you'll, you'll see. He detects. He's the world's greatest detective. So when we cut back, you know, Batman's just like in a wheelchair. He's recuperating. Uh, but like, you know, Dr. Eagles like reaches out behind him and he like grabs her and spins her around. He's got his, he's, his reflexes are still honed. Wait, she's she's living with him in the mansion? No, they're living at the house. It, it, oh, yeah, there's all place. flashbacks. Yeah, oh, no. Oh, it's, okay. it's not very clearly defined, the right. time frame. Okay. But yeah. Then we just watch Bruce Wayne spend six months recuperating and living in the company of this beautiful doctor. Oh. And they're just hanging out in this town. So is he going around town and stuff? Like hanging out in the grocery store and shit? Dr. Eagles like wheels him around town. And nobody (sighs) recognizes Bruce Wayne. Nah. Well, he's in the wheelchair, you know, like... What would Bruce like, Wayne be doing here? Exactly. It looks kind of like him, but it couldn't possibly. Also, Bruce Wayne is missing! Oh yeah, nobody talks about that. Right. Well, he's a recluse. Sometimes he doesn't show up. He disappears for, for months. Oh, he's one of those billionaires. He just, you know, goes off on a sabbatical. Yeah, maybe he's in Switzerland or something. Actually, or that Paris. would be a good idea for him to do that in case he ever gets injured. <laughs> yes. He set the precedent that Bruce Wayne disappears. Just disappears for months on end, oh. and then comes back with mysterious injuries. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, she she helps nurse him back to health, and he's doing like crazy exercises and stuff like that. But he's also like gardening with her, and like they're they're living mm. a kind of domestic lifestyle. Yeah. It mirrors Joker and his life with Rebecca, right. where it's like. The two of them have taken an opportunity to get off the fucking table, stop being Batman and the Joker, meet a nice girl, settle down, and live their lives. Oh, right. and be and sane. And they can't fucking do it, either one of them. That's right. We already know how this ends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. So, uh, meanwhile, Batman is, like, doing his thing. He's he's uh, he's training in the cave. He's, like, keeping up with his the physical therapy. Okay. And he keeps, like, slipping and tripping. And when, he's, when he trips and Pratt falls, he's like, oh, right. Joker is like obsessed with old comedians who do these kinds of like trips and flips and falls and crap. He's a regular person. He probably hasn't uh, he has he probably hasn't let go of his obsession with those comedians. I will just break into every video rental or audio cassette rental place in Gotham and look up the names of people who are renting old shit, like old movies and old comedy acts, well, that's a good and idea. see if any names like crop up that look suspicious, like Joseph Kerr, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> He smashes the screen and says, how could you be so stupid, Joker, so obvious? Why couldn't you have hidden yourself away a little more cleverly? Oh, so he doesn't want to find you? Why him? couldn't you have given me a little more time? Yeah, well, yeah. like... I wasn't ready to find Dr. you. With Dr. Eagles. Do I want to find you? Do I want you to want to be found? Like, if you pick the name so obvious, maybe right. that, like, the Joker is only skin deep. Mm. And then he'll come out. Like, it's not buried. Right. You know? So, so I have to stop him. Yeah, so Batman Even is like... Even though when I try to stop him, it might activate him and I won't kill him, and so then he's going to kill more people later. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, but don't worry. He'll, he'll activate him way before that. Okay. So Batman... Or yeah, I'm going to activate the hell out of him with my car. <laughs> Wham! So, yeah, I'll <laughs> just hit him with the Batman. Activate him to death by Citizen vehicular Joseph homicide. Citizen Joseph Kerr was, was manslaughter today. Bell, Bell, they, no, Bruce they, Wayne. In a hit and run accident. No, he'd send him to the court and be like, that's a fucking Joker. <laughs> Look at him! Look, all right, imagine he's white. Yeah. Like, actual white. Really, really white. Like, like, yeah. No, they'd be like, local hero, uh, anonymous citizen, took one for the team. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when he says, I've got you now, you joker. I've got, I've got you now. I'm getting back to being a fucking lunatic again. And uh, Amazing see, detective work. Like, Bruce is up at four in the morning back at uh, Dr. Eagle's place. He's just watching the night. Mm. And she's like, okay, let's, like... All the cars on the table, and she tells her backstory. She's like, he's like, you're a brilliant doctor. What are you doing in this crappy little town? Mm. She's like, I used to like love the city and want to go there, and when I did, I got raped. Oh. So I receded into this little town and just hid from myself. Nobody, nobody helped me. Like nobody came to my defense. 
just somebody attacked me and raped me and I, I and I couldn't I, I just couldn't live with it so I left the city and I, I couldn't feel safe again so I came so I came to a court and I stayed there and then a few years later I got better I got healthier and I went back to the city just like to experience because like I love art I love the city I mm. love like museums and culture and stuff yeah it's a fun place to be yeah well like I'm a city girl like I want to be there. I became a doctor so I could work at like Gotham Medical. Like, mm -hmm. not to, not to nursemaid randos from the river <laughs> ever for six months. So she goes back to the city and she's attacked again. Oh wow! And again, she's not saved. But this time, Batman came. Oh. Okay. And that's why I kept your secret, Batman. And she gives him like a package because he's like all healed up, and it's it's his suit. She fixed his suit. You can go now. You can go be Batman again. Like, I know that Batman's important. Like, he saved mm. me. And he's like, ugh, damn it. Well, he's like, <laughs> he, he's a man possessed. He's like standing yeah. on her lawn, like, da 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 <laughs> But like, I got, no, I'm, yeah. like, I'm on a robe. That's interesting. I thought he was going to be activated by her story of like, of I was attacked. And being and, like, no, and yeah, never. That's right. Yeah. That's why I'm I Batman. I failed someone else. Yeah. No. Now I have to go back and keep yeah, being Batman. No, because Dimitris doesn't want to say Batman is insane. He's saying like, Batman right. is choosing to be Batman. Yeah. And in this case, it's like he has the, he ha it's like the last temptation of Christ. You have an opportunity. Mm. You could stay right, here right. in accord and be happy. Right, but you are Batman. But you though. are Batman, though. Okay, this is the call to action as well. Yes. So yeah. Batman then leaves, and we see the Batmobile like roar to action. He goes to Joseph Kerr's apartment, and he finds like a photo of him and Rebecca, and he looks into the eyes of Joe Kerr's photo, and he sees madness, and he sees sanity. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh. Oh, this is interesting. And then there's a dude in the apartment. He's like, ah, Joker! And he, he kicks him in the face. And it's, <laughs> it's the super. And he's like, what are you doing, man? Yeah, poor Joe and his, uh, his fiance are out. They're, they're, they're in the, like, they're in the not Adirondacks. They're out by that cabin. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, the one that blew up. Mm. It got rebuilt somehow. Yeah. It has been remade. Batman's like, ah, no. So then uh, we see that, like, a storm comes to Gotham, and it's like, it's pretty disruptive. And then we just cut to the action. We're on a rooftop. Whoa. Councilwoman Kenner's been kidnapped by the Joker again. There's police choppers encircling them with guns trained. And Batman's like, you got what you wanted, I'm here, let her go, and he's like. This is quite the jump. It, it's a, it's a yeah. major jump, we're gonna go back, don't worry. Don't worry, we'll go back. Yeah. Fuck. I know. <laughs> I know. God damn. It. I don't understand why it still has to be Kenner. Can't it just be his new girlfriend? I just think no, sometimes we should start like... our stories at the beginning. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> the good script. You're a shitty person. So, so Joker hits like the, the go on his jetpack and he flies with Kenner away. Oh my and god. Batman like, throws a batarang and encircles his legs and follows after him. Uh, and it's like it wasn't always like this. Uh, so we go back to Joker like at the like summer cottage. With Rebecca, he's still Joe Kerr, yeah. and he proposes to her. She's like, Joe, this is like the sixth time you proposed to me. And he's like, oh, well, the, let's try for six. Will you marry me? And she's like, yes. And he's like, oh. And then he just manically bounces around the room. She's like, holy shit. Hey, you are losing it. And he's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and like, we know that Batman's returned because Batman came back earlier in the story. Mm -hmm. So like, there's a picture of him in the paper, which he hasn't seen yet. Oh. But we know it's just a matter of time because he's like, it, it, he's, it's fraying. Yeah, he's, already yeah, he's going. And he's, he's hopping around the room. He's proposed six times. Yeah, he's losing it. I, I, I think that's like a thing. Cause like Spider Man does that to Mary Jane a couple of times in the Demetrius run. And I think that's just like a cute, like romantic gesture that Demetrius likes to see. Oh, where it's like you know. I know we're already engaged, but I'd like to propose to you again. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I know we're already married, but I'd like to propose to you again. I really just like the proposal that's, part. Well, that's the like most. Well, it's just let's relive this moment that, and that can be let's romantic. Firm our our commitment yeah. to each other. And, you know, like I'd marry you all over again. That kind yeah, of thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I've that's never sweet. I've never heard of that. But okay. this though is weird. You know what? I've only seen it in Spider-Man comics, written by J.M.D. <laughs> Joe and Rebecca are taking a walk in the rain by a river, and he pulls out the newspaper for some reason, and he sees Batman, and he's just like he just goes catatonic. Oh, he doesn't just throw the paper in the river and then it triggers him? No, he's like, yeah, into the river with you. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I threw him in the river the first time. No, I'll throw you into the river like a dead body. Oh my God. They're going on like a, a, like a romantic hike in the mm. rain and he has a map and he's like, hang on, I, I, there's, a, there's a bridge over here. Let me, let, me go, let me go check and see if it's safe for you. You wait right here, I'll be right back. And then he leaves and becomes the Joker. 
Like <laughs> literally, he just ditches her in this like in the, in the woods. Does he stand up on the bridge and then like fall into the water and the makeup washes off? He jumps into the river and he just stands in like the running water for a while and just like loses it. Uh, Joker is. <laughs> At least he doesn't go to the river and then like do a dance and then become the Joker. Oh, thank you. No, there's no dancing. <laughs> I mean, it's just in the movies that he does that. Right. Or juggle. Uh, there is this boat, though, which he pilots. Yes. Uh, well, Joker uh, has at least three costume changes in this book. In this <laughs> one, he's a sea captain, and he's taken Councilwoman Kenner, and he's got her on the Joker boat. Which what, is, also is this like a before or after he tried to escape on the jetpack? This, this is after he escapes on the jetpack. He, he must have ditched Batman and then gotten on the boat. Why did we even show the Batarang grabbing his legs if we weren't going to have Batman, like, catch him. I really don't know. Fuck! This is, this is maximum overdrive, but with a boat. Yes. Oh, Except yeah. it's his own face. <laughs> it's his own face, not the Green Goblin. Yeah. By the way, what the fuck is the Green Goblin doing in maximum overdrive? <laughs> what? One trucker was just like, I really like the Green I Goblin. Really like I really Man. like the Green Goblin. Yeah, like it's going to be on the front of my car. Like, what? I remember as a kid, I, I caught on TV, I'm like, what the absolute fuck is happening? <laughs> and I watched that whole movie waiting for a Spider-Man reference. <laughs> No. And the only one is that the Green Goblin's head is on the truck, the evil truck that's yeah. alive. And I'm like, they don't even say Green Goblin in the movie. <laughs> yeah, it's weird enough to Can see. Can you do that? I, without referencing it. I mean, they did. So, jo but like Joker refers to Councilman Kenner as like his beloved. So like, clearly Joker has designs for Kenner. And I think it's like- Why? I, I think it's because she's a representative of law and order and he wants to like, influence that in some way. I think it's With like, his penis. Probably. I don't know. Hmm. It's kind of nebulous. But anyway, then Batman uses an insane bat jet ski hovercraft thing that looks like an augmentation of his cape. Right, he converts the cape into a... No, that's no, just an additional just, thing. His cape's it. just like part of it. Oh. And he <laughs> flies out after Joker. Joker's like, no, how come it's always him? Ah! It's like, would you prefer Superman? He'd be, he'd be over <laughs> 10 minutes ago. So uh, then we see Joker, like, he goes to the riverbank. Like, he ditches Rebecca back in the day when he's Joe. And he goes to the riverbank and he just looks into the river. And then Batman, like, blasts out of the river. And then he jumps into the river. And he's, like, referring to, like, how Batman is always there, drowning him. It's like, dude, you know, you threw Batman in the river. You're an asshole. Mm. So then, uh, you know, Batman smashes his bat boat <laughs> thing, bat, bat ski, into the Joker boat which also has maximum overdrive eyes and uh he, he they changed that the eyes were on the side the uh, lights were on the side before like yeah, there's additional three lights. pages ago yeah they sure were wow oops <laughs> batman it's the, he, he boards the the joker boat and joker says no you're not gonna take rebecca away from me wait why did i say that Who's, who is that? Wait, who's Rebecca? Huh, I feel like I almost remembered something. Oh, well, but we see Joker, like, immerse himself in water and then emerges and he's Joker again. And he his, his monologue is, like, normal and says, Rebecca, I'm sorry I had to go away. But don't you see that, like, I had, to, I had to obliterate you because once he came back, I had to come back. And then, like, his font becomes jagged and Joker. Yep. Okay. I had to get away from you right. so that he didn't kill you. And, like, he wouldn't remember you to get you. So, yeah, so that I don't kill you. Yeah. So he just leaves Rebecca then. Yes. He doesn't like he doesn't fuck with her, her or do or anything weird. He just nope, walks away. No, he just away. walks away. Okay. So she just she's just left there. She has no idea what happens. Yeah, okay. that's right. That's right. For all she knows, like Joe drowns in the river nearby. <laughs> that's basically what she assumes. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Joker and Batman square off. Batman's like, "Come on, give her up, and I'll and, and you'll take me." And he's like, "I'll never give her up." Uh, okay. <laughs> he's like. What? Okay. <laughs> cool. All so, right, don't take back. Not yeah. got a question. And then a yet. helicopter comes in and... A helicopter comes in? Yeah, well, they're surrounded by those helicopters that were going to shoot them on the roof and they, yeah. they follow them to the water. Uh, the helicopter, like, rescue worker, like, takes Kenner, brings her up, mm -hmm. and then he's just like, you know, and he, and he, and he says a bunch of... And then, like, things. shoots Joker in the head. No, because Batman's there. Rifle. Oh. No, it's Joker's like, this is the part where you jump out and then, 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 then the cops shoot me, right? And he says, no. You'd, you'd find a way to survive anyway. I'm with you to the end. And Joker says, which only proves you're just as crazy as I am. And then he hits a button on his watch, which activates an explosive on the boat. Mm. And he's like, oh, we're going to blow things up. Batman's like remembering the time when like Joker blew up the building and he was left 
on the side of the like the river. Right. He's like, oh no, you don't. So Joker sets off his his jetpack. Batman's like, fuck that. I'm not I'm not dying here on this stupid boat shaped like <laughs> Joker. I'm not dying again. So he jumps on Joker. Joker's like, what are you doing? You're crazy. Get off me, man. <laughs> and uh, and then Joker reveals like he didn't remember to regas the jetpack. So they both fall into the boat as the boat explodes. Oh. And then Batman like doesn't conveniently die or get like seriously or mortally injured <laughs> and uh, while he's underwater he sees Joker and he like thinks about it for a second and then goes and gets him and rescues <laughs> him and brings him back to the surface I was like do I have to save him? yeah ah, I do have to save I'm him I'm not movie Batman Shoot. I do have to save him <laughs> so then he, they're both rescued by like an, an accompanying helicopter and uh, Rebecca is left in her apartment with like just one photo of the two of them that it took in six months mm. uh, to, to wonder what happened to her beloved Joe and like maybe one day he'll come back to her and like that yeah. is punctuated not. over Joker just manically laughing in Arkham Asylum getting a straight jacket right oh Rebecca you gotta let this one go <laughs> yeah so that's how it should end but then there's a little more and I'm like oh thank oh, you oh there's room for a little more we, so we go back to Dr. Eagle's place and she wakes up and on her desk or on, on her veranda is a, uh, a, a bouquet of roses and a card that is just the bat signal, which is just the ending of every episode of the Batman animated series. We show up, da, 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 da. credits. If you light this on fire, maybe I'll show up. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, damn, yeah, and then, don't do that, Batman. I know. And so Batman just stands, let her be. Stands on a precipice, and he's just like that. Like Batman rediscovered himself there, and right. he will always be indebted to her. And like he knows he will never set foot in a court ever again. But he will always like think of it when he needs to like reaffirm his commitment to the mission. Right. And it's like I kind of dig that. Where Batman's like, I can never come back here, or right. I will or never I'll leave. Stop being Batman forever. I like that a lot better than like if I kill one person, I'll kill another person. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Like, that is much if, better. If, than if that. I come back to this sleepy, beautiful town that I lived in for six months as a regular person, a regular yeah. Joe, if you will. Right. Uh, then then I'll never leave. Uh, yeah, or, I like. I like I like that. I wish he hadn't sent her flowers. Because yeah. that's like teasing. <laughs> yeah, here you go. I'm never be with you. Well, I think it's more like a confirmation. Like, you saved me and I'm being Batman. Like, I'm doing the thing. Yeah. I'm yeah, saving I'm more people that, like you. That had to happen. Exactly. Right. No, that would be the great thing is that, that if he's like, no, I, I want to be together. She goes, no, you have to be yeah, Batman. No, I don't want to be with you. You're Batman. <laughs> Not only is that life insane, but <laughs> you can't you, stop being Batman. Exactly. What would have happened to me the second time? If you hadn't been there, exactly. Think right. of all the all of the me's out there. Right. If you gave up being Batman, yeah. For even yeah. just one day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, no, you have to always be out there. Imagine, Every death is you. on your imagine, hands. Imagine all the Doctor Eagle's rapes that could have been committed during the six month reco recovery period. Yeah. Court. I didn't, You're a monster. I didn't <laughs> save you to fall in love with you. I saved you so you could get back to doing what you had yeah. to do. Oh, oh. You. I think you read into this a little too much. For <laughs> she like takes the flowers. She's like, oh, that's nice. Oh. Throws them away. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> da, 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 da. Do you think he does that when he flies away after doing something? Yeah. I do when I make any jump over like a few inches. So, Joker or Batman Going Sane by James DeMatteis and Joe Staten. Uh, the art is a little like dated and simple, mm. but it's also kind of gritty. It serves the story. It serves yeah, the story. I think, I, I, I think that like. Pretty good. I'm glad that it happened now, um, you know, as opposed to like in the 80s when it was pitched mm. because you know it would have created a butterfly effect that would have kept Craven's Last Hunt from happening and stuff but right. like you know it, it's fun and yeah. it's worth the price of admission because like it's super ch it's a Legend of the Dark Knight from the 90s yeah. just go to any quarter band you'll find it yeah uh, I did these are all yeah. from a you'll garage you'll probably find sale. all of them for the quarter no no I spent four dollars each of them was a dollar mm. but it's a quarter band well that was a garage sale I'm saying go to the quarter bins oh, okay. and you'll find it there but like my personal expense was higher, but like I can shoulder the burden. I have a channel where I talk about comic books. I can write that off. You only spend like a dollar on all four of them. Right. They're, the quarter bins don't exist anymore. They have to be destroyed. Like I, I remember one sale that had quarter bins, and those books were wrecked. Like they didn't have covers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I buy the Joker. Go because he can't go more insane after killing Batman. He will then therefore go sane. Like I'm like yeah. I don't necessarily understand the logic it i guess it's kind of like oh, i only exist because of batman yes. but i also don't like that interpretation of the joker yeah. and batman where it's like batman is the cause of the joker it's not his fault he didn't try to create the joker but like he did though yeah and this is like 
No, no, it's like directly, specifically that. Because yeah. the second Joker finds out that Batman is back, he's like, well, back I guess back. I gotta go back to being Joker again. Yep. Here I go killing again. <laughs> like, yeah. because of Batman, he's mm -hmm. the only reason. If not for him, I wouldn't kill people. Like, uh, I could have a happy life otherwise. Well, I yeah, don't yeah, but at the same time, buy like, it. It's very flimsy. Like, his, 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 his sanity. Right. You know, like every turn, he's like, ah! Like he that's true. Before Batman's even yeah, that's Batman, true. talking about Batman. That's true, but he doesn't. Right. And so, like, yeah, he'd be a messed up person, yeah. but he doesn't become the Joker until <laughs> Batman. Until he knows Batman's back. Uh, okay. Yes, I, he does. He named himself Joker. Yeah, but he doesn't kill people and shit. Right. Like, I, I'll take him being in this catatonic state. Right, like, like according to this book, the world is better off with no Batman. Yeah. Because there's no Joker. Right, I love that, actually, because the moral of the end of this is, like, be Batman all the time. Yeah. And it's like, no! <laughs> Go to a court, he'll leave! Yeah, how nice would it be if, like, you also had other things thrown in where, like, oh, there's no Joker, so there's, like, less insane shit. Right. But crime is up, like, 300% well, in yeah. Gotham. Yes, so, like... Yeah, no, the only thing that happens is, like... The councilwoman starts a one-woman crusade against the entire police department, which maybe should happen anyway. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I. I mean, okay. So like, yes, there's other people besides the Joker. So it's not that like because the Joker is back, like, really therefore <laughs> it's it would have been better if Batman had stayed gone. Yeah. But because you don't see Batman saving other people after this, <laughs> you, I sure as hell get the impression that the writer is kind of mentioning or yeah, like, like throwing in the idea that like oh is it really you know joker joker he kills a lot of yeah. people he kills 40 people or whatever in the beginning yeah, of the story yeah like that's a that's a fucking lie yeah a that lot. was nonchalantly one, too and one like, shot muggers like, like usually don't even kill people right <laughs> so like how many muggers does batman have to stop in order to make it like worth it right for the joker to be back <laughs> yeah hey i saved like a dozen person snatchers this month cool joker poisoned the water supply <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time on the long episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long. It's like we can go same too. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, it's.